Hello, alright, hello everyone, and welcome to the final discussion. I'm your host, and then the final two is Dougie Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Wildcard Saturday 2024 edition. And, uh, what an interesting start to the playoffs. You had the Browns versus the Texans in the game that got out of hand, and the Chiefs versus the Dolphins in a game of very cold temperatures that also got out of hand. Well, temperatures in the game. And with that, we're going to get right into the action, starting with. The Cleveland Browns, and you know what, Joe Flacco's run with the Browns for the end of the season, it was fun while it lasted, but in the end, the Browns are back where they started. It's time for the Browns to start over once again. They'll be entering year three with Deshaun Watson as their supposed franchise quarterback with few signs that he'll ever return to the player who once led, led the NFL in passing yards during the 2020 season. Um, Considering Watson didn't play in the following year, he'll be asked to return to elite status four years after the fact, and that is exactly what the expectation should be after trading multiple draft picks, including f uh, three first-round selections for Watson and then signing him to the most guaranteed money in NFL history. The possibility of Joe Flacco competing for the job next season completely disappeared with Saturday's embarrassing loss to the Texans in the first round of the postseason. Then again, I don't know why he would be in the running for the starting job anyway. Uh, but in case I needed to get put to bed, they got put to bed. Flacco came in hot upon taking the reins of the offense, becoming the first quarterback in Browns history to throw for 300 more yards in four straight games. He led the surging Cleveland squad be set with injuries and helped him to the AFC second best record. His performance on Saturday will not be forgotten for all the wrong reasons. He, will, he threw pick sixes on back to back third quarter drives. To be fair, Derek Barnett blasted him on the first one. Still, the game quickly spiraled out of control with the score escalating from 24 to 14 to 38 to 14 in a matter of two minutes. For Cleveland to realize the full potential of its talented roster, Watson will need to look like the version that showed up against the Titans in the second half of the Ravens game. He needs to stay healthy first and foremost, particularly after his season was ended because of a shoulder injury that required surgery. Uh, Nick, Nick Chubb's return for season in, uh, from his own season in the knee injury will help the offense significantly, as well as uh, having off healthy offensive tackles. But the future of the Brown lies in what happens at quarterback. Flacco will help provide a glimpse of what the team can be, and if he's interested in returning in a backup role, that's an option right there. Uh, but there's still plenty left for Watson and the Browns to prove if they're going to come anywhere close to reaching the Super Bowl contender expectations that Cleveland set for itself based on what it spent to acquire his services. So, yeah, year four um, of Deshaun Watson. What will that look like? Will he be able to stay healthy? Will the Cleveland Browns as a team be able to stay overall healthy and not have so many uh, health issues? Will the defense perform better on the road? I guess we'll have to see, but yeah, I don't think the Browns are changing anything, and again, it was impressive they got as far as they did, uh, but I think to get even further, they need to show Watson healthy and playing uh, like a franchise quarterback. <laughs> Houston Texans. So this team remains dangerous because of their quarterback CJ Stroud and their offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick. And I'll also give a quick shout out to their head coach D'Amico Ryans for the team job he has done in his first year as a head coach and turning this franchise around after uh, some years of mediocrity. So CJ Stroud isn't your typical rookie quarterback. He met every expectation this season and exceeded them. In the, la in the last case of doubting what the first year single, single caller could do against the NFL's top ranked defense. Stroud set postseason rookie postseason records with 236 yards passing and three touchdown throws in the first half. Oh, Saturday's back over the ground. Stroud definitely navigated the pocket with subtle movement to avoid pressure or create enough space not to be rattled by the Browns' pressure packages. Impressive, uh, impressively, a front that featured the uh, defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett, didn't sack Stroud once. Stroud made multiple big time throws, including a 38 yard toss to Nico Collins to set up the game's first score and a 37 yard toss for a touchdown to Dalton Schultz. As good as Stroud was, his offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick might, might have been better. He was in his bag, taking full advantage of an over aggressive defense. Throughout the season, Stroud and company struggled against more man coverage. Slowick countered that with misdirection plays. For example, Collins' 15-yard touchdown began as a fake screen to the right. The defense can began to flow toward the pull and lineman. Stroud quickly pivoted and found a Collins open behind Larry Tunso, who had a one-on-one -on -one block in space against the defensive back, which was a complete mismatch for that DB. Uh, Houston got Cleveland flowing and playing up the field, targeted 
targeted areas behind those defenders and secondary struggle to match up against the mad beaters. The combination of solo and struggle makes the Texans difficult to beat in the next turn in the playoffs because the coach brings strong play designs while his quarterback is more talented enough to create even when the situation is not ideal. Very curious to see the Texans play um, all, next week. They will be on the road. Maybe the Ravens. That would, that would be quite the, uh, the matchup there. Uh, Miami Dolphins, so another year in the postseason, another year with an early exit, and really this team's got to find a way to not only endure the playoff weather, but also make a push in further into the postseason rather than just getting knocked out in the first round. Um, because as it stands right now, this team is not built for playoff football, and unless the, unless the team finds a way to maintain home field advantage in the future, it's difficult to envision the squad being a real threat despite all the chunk plays it creates throughout the regular season. The Dolphins want to play fast and free. Postseason football makes that tough when the weather gets tight and cold. Uh, Miami squad looked miserable playing in the fourth quarter's game in NFL postseason history. The Chiefs, meanwhile, played aggressive and fast. The Dolphins' offense managed 137 fewer yards than they averaged throughout the regular season. Two attack on Lobo once again failed to perform in cold conditions. Uh, since entering the NFL, a tag on Lobo led team hasn't won a game when the kickoff temperature dipped below 45 degrees. The four year pro then helped matters by completing 51.3% of his passes with a touchdown toss and interception. Raheem Morissette and Devon A. Chan combined for an average of three yards per carry. Steve Spy acknowledged defense played aggressive and flew to the football. The unit overwhelmed Tagging Loba and allowed only one big play downfield. For Miami, it becomes a question of how the Dolphins build moving forward. Tagging Loba will operate under his fifth year rookie option. However, the negotiation window is open if Miami's front office chooses to do so, considering Tagging Loba's previous injuries concerns and the quarterback not handling late season situations well, the Dolphins might pump the brakes on negotiations until possibly next off season. Although I don't really I don't necessarily agree with that. I think Tua can be the franchise guy. I think Tua is the fran correction, I think he is the franchise quarterback for the Dolphins. And I think you might want to get ahead on contract negotiations, kinda lock him down right now before the price tag could potentially go up. Now when I say give him a contract extension, it doesn't mean, you know, tie a millstone around your necks with uh, guaranteed money. If you can find a way to do that, you know, get, set, you know, set him up to get paid, but also ensure that if you do indeed have to move on, at the very least, you're going to be tied down with dead cap. Um, but pretty good season for the Dolphins. Mean, well, not good in how it ended. I mean, this team had its moments where it played good, and then it had its moments where it played bad, so... That would have been a good season that they made the playoffs, but overall I think just too much inconsistency with this defense and the injuries on defense were absurd. Kansas City Chiefs. New number one target has emerged for the Cape for the Chiefs and the former Sheen Rice. Um, so move over Travis Kelsey, a new favorite target has been found in Kansas City. The Chiefs struggled at times during the regular season because their offense lacked a true threat of wide receiver. As the first couple of months went by and the weather grew colder, rookie Rashid Rice started to earn the trust of Patrick Mahomes. Now Rice has developed into a full-blown threat after a career, after a career performance during Saturday's victory over the Dolphins. In subsequent so conditions, well, Rice showed he can still be a reliable option. This year's 50, 55th overall pick. Uh, can contribute 130 receiving yards. More importantly, Mahomes targeted him 12 times over the past seven games. The rookie either outright led or tied for the team leading targets among Kansas City's wide receivers and tight ends. He has more targets than Kelsey in these of the past four contests. No one is downplaying how effective Kelsey remains or what he means to the offense. And Rice's case is getting open and creating that big catch. Realistically, Kelsey's importance is creating opportunities for Rice and he's making defenses pay. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl because they were able to adjust without that kill. Holmes improved and became a more complete quarterback with an improved understanding of where to go with the ball instead of relying on a unique talent to consistently make plays. Kansas City's offense continues to evolve. Kelsey remains a primary threat. Isaiah Pachenko is offensive the defense. At the same time, Rice is not a target making opponents pay. To that point, all 12 of Rice's targets came against the Dolphins off coverage with 80 yards after the catch for her next-gen stats. Uh, the Chiefs easily overcame frozen conditions Saturday and looked better than they have throughout a good portion of the regular season. If this continues, the Chiefs may be far better or maybe far more of a threat to repeat as champions they initially believed. So yeah, what was once a broken offense appears to have patched itself up together well enough to, uh, Push past the first rounds of the first round of playoff. Curious to see who they played next, um, and curious to see how far this team could go. Now that Rashid Rice has 
has really stepped up, and this offense has started to kind of round out. And, uh, you know, defense is also playing good, too. And with that, that will wrap up this episode of Kind of Fun Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below.